Are you looking to add an in-tank fuel pump to your ride, but you're afraid it's a little too complicated to do on your own? Well, Holly has a solution for you. It's our universal retrofit fuel pump modules. Follow along, and I'll show you how to make the switch to EFI with a retrofit fuel pump module from Holly. With pumps capable of flowing 255, 450, all the way up to 525 liters per hour, Holly's sure to have a fuel pump for your EFI needs. Now you can convert your factory tank or fuel cell to an EFI style in-tank fuel system with return or return the setups. The first thing we need to do is to determine the best location to mount our fuel pump module in our fuel cell or fuel tank. To mount the module, you'll need to cut a three and a quarter inch hole with a hole saw similar to this. Identify things like where the vehicle's fuel tank straps and frame rails will contact your fuel tank. That way we can avoid these areas. Now evaluate the position of your fuel level sender float. Removing the existing unit, if yours has one, will help you determine the float arm path. That way you can cut your new hole without interfering with it. Be sure to look for and avoid any bowls or baffles internally in the tank as well. You'll also want to look and determine the best routing position for any supply, return, and vent hoses may be required for your unit. Once you've determined the best possible location for your pump module, drill the three and a quarter inch diameter hole in the tank with your hole saw. Remember, gas burns, but fumes explode, so don't become a statistic. If you plan to reuse a fuel tank, make sure that all the fuel has been removed and consult with a professional about degassing the tank before cutting or drilling. Once you have the hole cut, Use a file or some emery cloth to deburr the edge of your cut. The thick foam gasket supplied with your fuel pump module can compensate for ribs up to a quarter inch thick in the fuel tank surface. If your tank has deeper ribs or the ribs are perpendicular and have sharp edges, you'll need to use some additional sealant such as Dow Corning 730 RTV. Apply the sealant between the foam ring and the tank surface to seal it properly. Remove and clean any debris that may have fallen into the tank during the hole cutting process before you start the installation. Next, we need to measure the tank depth from the highest part of the fuel tank to the very bottom of the floor directly below. The maximum tank depths that our pump modules can accommodate vary from 12 to 13 and 7 30 seconds of an inch, depending on which pump module you choose. And minimum depth requirements range from 7 to 9 inches, depending on the model. Now take this tank depth measurement and insert it into the chart found in the instructions. Subtract your depth measurement from the supply hose specifications listed for your specific model to get the proper length for the supply and return hose. Now measure and mark your return hose, starting with the end of the tape at the end of the hose and pulling back towards the module. Once you have your mark, you can cut the hose to length. Now cut the supply line that's already pre-attached to your fuel pump using the same method, pulling from the end of the hose back towards the fuel pump, then mark and cut. To determine the length we'll need for our pump hanger bracket, you'll use the same measurements that we used earlier for our return and supply lines. Using your measurement, place a mark on the hanger bracket, and then cut the hanger at the mark. Install the pump hanger bracket to the flange boss using the two screws and lock washer supplied with your kit. Install the bracket so that the groove is facing your fuel pump. You'll have to remove the foam ring in order to access both holes. Install the pump hanger bracket to the flange boss using the two screws and lock washer supplied with your kit. Then torque them to 12 to 18 inch pounds. Don't forget to reinstall the foam gasket. Slide the screw clamp over the supply hose and push the hose outlet onto the hose barb found in the pump module body. In order to gain better access to the clamp screw, you can remove one of the clamping lugs. Next, rotate the pump until it contacts the hanger bracket. Then slide the hose clamp towards the pump and over the hose barb, tighten it to 13.5 inch pounds. Now install the two two inch diameter screw clamps around the pump module and mounting bracket. Place a clamp at each end of the foam sleeve on the pump. If you've chosen an EFI system that's capable of being run returnless, why not choose one of our returnless fuel pump modules? The installation is the same as before, but be sure to check the chart included in the instructions since the base measurements change with the returnless style pump modules. When you go to install the hydromat filter onto your fuel pump module, position the hydromat so that the shortest length of the filter is closest to the wall of the fuel tank and the longer section is pointed towards the center of your tank. You'll also want to avoid interfering with the swing motion of the fuel level sender float as well as any internal baffles or bowls. First remove the caps from the pump inlet and the filter outlet. Line up one of the holes found in the filter mounting tab 
with the locating pin found on your fuel pump. Be sure that the fuel filter is going to be orientated correctly once it's installed into your fuel tank before you proceed. Once you're sure it's in the correct position, push the hydromat onto the pump inlet until it bottoms out and locks into place. If you're installing one of our retrofit fuel pump modules into a polypropylene tank, better known as a plastic tank, we recommend that you use one of our stiffening shims. Separate the shim at the slot and spiral it through the tank opening. You can apply some adhesive compound like Loctite 571 between the shim surface and the tank to hold it in place. Use clamps or tape to keep the shim against the inside surface of the tank opening until the adhesive sets up. Position the shim so that it's not visible in the opening and wipe away any excess Loctite that protrudes into the tank opening. Before installing the pump module into your fuel tank, install any adapters or ports needed for your supply, return, and vent lines. Now is also a good time to go ahead and install the preferred electrical connector. Now we're ready to install our pump module into our fuel tank. Make sure that the foam ring is installed on the flange of the pump module. Slide the longer side of the hydromat into the tank opening first. Then fold the shorter side, just enough to allow you to get it through the whole opening. Now lower the universal pump hanger into position. If you can, look to see that the hydromat is in the desired position and that it's not interfering with any internal obstructions. If it is, you can rotate the universal pump hanger assembly as needed. Make sure that all the swing out mounting lugs are in the closed position, then lower the module the rest of the way down into the tank. Press down on the module and compress the seal against the tank surface. Then tighten the assembly screws in a clockwise motion to swing the mounting lugs out into the open position. Then gradually torque the five assembly screws using a crisscross pattern until the torque of 40 to 60 inch pounds is achieved. Finish your install all the way to the engine bay with one of our fuel system kits. We have several to choose from depending on your needs, and they include hose, pumps, regulator, fittings, filters, and clamps depending on which one you choose. To complete your installation, make all the necessary connections for your fuel, vent, as well as electrical connections, and the fuel sending unit. Once you have your tank up in place but not fully secured, it's a good idea to go ahead and power up the pump. That way you can check for any leaks. If you're leak free, go ahead and raise it in its final position and secure the tank. Make sure that you don't pinch any wires or crush any fuel lines though. And remember, all vent lines must terminate at least six inches above the top of your fuel tank. That wasn't so bad. Now you can convert your factory tank or fuel cell into an in-tank EFI system quickly and easily all on your own. For more great fuel system solutions and how-to videos, visit us at holly.com.